ide kakoni kwasa at kakoni yahana to yake wush kanaku to the arti ya think it yawe achtu asaku we kayani yekach to sak chadaka sawu to saku askwani kayani kayak dasa yawe yisakuko a Kaidihin ach to us a goo, so to a ahi, ya a sai. Was so ye a waka, a good a car, was so ye a so ye a yasak. Ye a way, ye a quaka. Deo to a ah, a good a ye a way a it aya. We think it ya da du nee at a two as a go a two day a two day ya gartus ah a it aya quat su a dat stugartus two a day we play park in a way relational suffix aya. Was a sai a ya Gartusha yeh wait a yes ya de a was a cook a kugu douche a douche a dancer yet a dark a gartu up ye away ya hyagene ya hana was a de woozy ye ji would so Ya ach to us a goo. Sakwa ach das a dati tundatani. Kayat its ucha yeku gink. We singit your tungi. Dart wushkanach. Wushkanach at the adi aya. Yak wahi. Seek dissi. Jen kat kat clay dushu. Ya wahi. Kajen kat kat. Akadusha kajen kakanaska dushu. Ya ye awake a gach to ark where Clay's car you a tongue ye coat. I ya just sing get enough. Ye awake to a circle cottage tea. At wake on a ye in cachwane, ye e de cacwane, guasa at cacwane, cacana, sing get enough. Gosha it at late car enough. Ye awake ha yet at two. Yisukuke was a do a sock, ya dis. Ya dis poa. To walk to see you do a sock, ya dis. Ya awake and cheese. Kun ya geese away, ya wahi ya ya gi. Or ya dis. I got a question. Uh, I mean, this is going on right now. Hush now. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Again? Oh, you're on. Okay, yeah. What's that to suck your dis? Your K away? A walk dissy, you do a suck your dis. On your keys away, ya will he, ya dis. A rayata. Kalt <laughs> 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 <
Quash Ah, Can you hear us? Ah. Uh. Yeah, we've got a new microphone. We're just trying it out. So. Oh. Uh, it's not it's not too clear or loud yet, so I've turned everything up maximum. Okay. So uh, we're gonna name some plants. We'll try and name as many as we can. We'll try not to repeat any that have already been said. So to help each other out, we're gonna try and say it nice and loud. And uh, all plants, all berries, underwater plants, trees, those types of things. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about just some more looking into verbs and how they work. Uh, we were going through some different verbs, just sort of saying how many different ways can this verb kind of change? Oh, that's why, right here. Ah. Okay. All right. 
Okay. And then, uh, then we'll look on and kind of review the adding the possessive marker to nouns, the relational marker. So that's the plan for today. And any any questions you guys might have, anything like that. Uh, the immersion is coming up in Juno, February 16th to the 18th, I think. I should know this stuff. Um, I just want to make sure that that's on your radar. Uh, let me look up the flyer real quick. Yeah, it's a three-day. Uh, the 16th through the 18th. So uh, it'll probably be here at UAS. We're still planning out the day-to-day -day, uh, functions of it, but there's a chance to just interact in the language. Uh, there is no, there are no classes on that Monday, so uh, we'll have the campus to ourselves, I think. And we'll try to stay in the language as much as possible and help each other out. Uh, yeah. And then we're trying to put together a class. Well, we're trying to do a couple of things. I guess I'll just share a couple of thoughts before we get started. Think of your plants. There's two things that we're trying. I'm trying to figure out. One is we're trying to take a group of language students uh, to potentially to New Zealand in June to go uh, hang out with some Maori folks to just study and speak. Klingit uh, in a different place and uh, to just sort of strategize and see what they might be doing that we could be doing and uh, potentially vice versa. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know there would be tuition involved for that and the tuition would also include the airfare. So, but we're trying to figure out the logistics, but I shall, I'll let you know as soon as I know more and if I know it's, if it's going to happen or not. I would be staying probably in a marae down there. Uh, President Peterson is trying to set up a plane right now from LA to New Zealand. But you'd have to buy your ticket from here to there. Right. You know, right now, Sarah's talking about how they want it to get it from Hawaii to there because there's a event going on in Hawaii. The yes. So there's a kind of a knowledge exchange conference going on in Hawaii the week before. So the last week of May, they'll be in Honolulu. And uh, it's just to sort of continue to foster this knowledge exchange based on the time when uh, a log logs were sent over there so they could make a Hawaiian uh, canoe, va'a, and then... Uh, the idea is this year there'll be a conference. And I think next year the VAA will probably start around Klukwan and be sailing through Southeast Alaska and then go out. I can't remember the whole route, but uh, so that's, that's something that's sort of in the works and I'll let you guys know about it as soon as I find out more. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll just sort of go roughly, well, I'll just name people as I see them uh, on my screen. Maybe we'll start with the ikhtidei ku'u, since the room always gets to go first, usually. And you guys can pick all the, all the plants. Uh, and just, you know, if we hear it, it's not a big, it's not a competition. Nobody's going to win. There's no trophies. Uh, it's just to sort of test ourselves. If you want to take notes and say, oh, what was that one? And you want to ask later, just write it down. Uh, we'll try not to use English. You can do, oh, all your oh darn shucks, whatever. Anything that you need to say, we should be able to learn how to say it and sing it and then say it. Uh, if you say something that we've already heard, because we're going to try and not repeat, uh, we'll say, deo tu wa ach. Deo tu wa ach. Can you write that down? Yeah, I'll write that down. Uh, so I'll write it on here for in the chat thing for the folks. First, I'll turn off my phone so I'm not beeping. 
So we talked a little bit about perfective forms of verbs, which means it will don't autocorrect. So a perfective means that the verb has happened. And then let me write this a little bit larger for you guys in the room. And so if you have a perfective and you put the word day in front of it, day in front of a verb means it's already happened. Day after a verb means hurry up and make it happen. It seems to be the same word. So if I say, uh, nata is go to sleep. Nata day is go to sleep right now. Uh, de huata would be, huata is I slept. And de huata is I already slept. So someone says, nata, de huata, I already slept. So that's the way the day is working. So if uh, some know-it-all tries to tell you something, you say, de huasaku, I already knew that. <laughs> you don't have to say it super sassy. I like to just sort of have fun. <laughs> you can if you want to. So deo tua ach means uh, we already heard it. And then I might say, uh, chakuta. And chakuta, and sometimes this is like this, chakuta means another one. So I'm just asking for a different one, right? So for example, if I lost my lucky pen, and then someone shows me a pen, no, ya do a, click, click. Here it is, here it is. I'll say, nope, nope. It's a different one, but thanks. Right, so chakuta means just something different. Deo tua ach. And then uh, if you can't think of a plant, you just say hooch. Hooch means it's all gone. No shame in the game. All fine. And we'll just go around a, probably a couple times because there's thankfully lots of us here. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we have exhausted our knowledge, and if it's just taking a long time because there's lots of us, which is amazing, mm -hmm. then I'll just open it up and say, okay, let's just name more. Okay. So that's how it goes. Uh, there's no winners. It's just for fun. So Question. Ah. Uh, um, so I turned it on a little late, and you were saying, uh, wasakuati anikag. So you were saying, how is the weather in your land? Yeah. And then you were saying, chaguta. So you wanted someone else to say how their weather was where they were? Uh, no, we kind of moved on. So this is for our name game where we just sort of name, see how many plants we could name, see how many animals or what usually i'll give you a category okay and so for this one uh if i say it means we've already heard it and if i say it means like a different one say another one and then uh yeah so here we go so i'm just gonna go in the order that i see online because i am not organized enough to make lists Someday, maybe. An shawat ke eat khoa ha. Yana eight. Yana eight. Yak e. And cheese. How the gun? What a khoa. Ah. Oh, see, in a ka. Ah. I don't know how to say it right. <laughs> Sacht again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ah, sacht. Okay. Kachen needs to eat for her. Sacht. So you're in a car? Sacht. Yeah. Uh, 
Silverweed, stock. Oh. Potato. Yeah, oh, uh, cheese. Yeah, <laughs> Took okay. again? Eatly. Eatly, okay. Um, tarts. Tarts. Oh. Huh? Okay. Shucks. Shucks, okay? Shucks, uh... A uh, steak curd, great curd, shark. Yeah, away. Shark. 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 Yeah, away. Uh, shama. Okay. Caribou moss. Oh. Yeah, away. What's it? It's a great deal. It's a good Okay. Cheese. <laughs> Joe, eat for her. Huh? Kishish. Kishish, your cake and cheese. Kashke, eat for her. Kashke, eat for her. Take a tank. Take a tank, your cake. Satuk, eat for her. Huh? Flus. Flus. Sorry about that. Um, Tesh. Pitch scab? Tesh. Oh, you okay. Yeah, oh, uh. Pitchy wood, ye do a saga at Sitchin. I see that car. What's took up after the yarkin? Quan Sain, eat for her. Um, I just had it. Hold on. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, maybe there's guns. Guns, guns, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, guns, yake, ah, uh, ah, guns, yake. Okay, what's Hold on, it will get a good year. Kai, it's it's a it's it's a what shits a shits a they can't enough wait. I could forget, I just lost it. It did cook ah, eat for her. Can it ah? Can it ah? Yak a quan then you eat for her. Y N L C. Go ahead. Yes, play go. Yes, play go. Okay. Juniper. Oh. Okay, ha. Huh. Cheese. How? Spruce How. bow. How? Okay. Kahweh. High bush cranberry. Kahweh. Okay, ha. Oh, you okay. 
Ve mikrofon khosatin akhtu asku akh ide yishi. Yake is chish. Yung ha id qwa ha. Hmm. Tu katasi. Ha. Yake. Ki det qwa kwas. Stakat yu ha nge wa ikhti ikhti de qu. Qwa id qwa ha ya iti ka ku. Ah, uh, hey, I walk up. Well, cook. Can I eat? <laughs> um, tin. Tin. Oh, okay. On dot kana hick at high. Okay. Yet a two chark hagu. Tissue go at. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, wa, yeah, wa. Adai, yeah, wa, yake. Shady, shady, yake, yake. Just ah, chick ah, ah, yake, yake, yeah, wa. Kin chay, kin chay, yake, yake, good cheese. Ah, ah, hey, ko ah, kastenet, kastenet. Yake, dachte hin ayak gachte ab, wuch in. Yake chawe, ah, kwasetini dat, an shawat ke. Shark. See ka. Shark. Ah, okay. Okay, shark. Yeah, what? Shark. Ah, okay. Out the gun. Yes. See you, Naka. Yes. Ah, okay. Tachanese. Kuwani. Kuwani. Huh, you okay? They sleep. So you hear Naka? Naka. 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 Yake qa it qa No good day No good day Fifty No good day No good day Box tail. Oh, knock at a CD. Yeah, what? Knock at a CD. Knock. 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 Knock, knock, knock. Yeah, Naskia. Knock. Yeah, we kechne. Yeah, we kachne. Kachne. Punky wood. It's for it's for smoking cannon missiles, cottonwood. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. Do to us a good way. Kuwa kan. We knock a kanak wuguti. Yeah, we do to us a good akuskiti. A joey did to us a good conachaway, we could walk on our high. Yak eh, so again. Kahwe Kahwe, deo to a ah, high bush cranberry. Jakuta, ah, 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 
Can it change? Twelve. Ah, shah, yeah, away. Okay. Can you get tea? Okay, good cheese. Joe. Eh. 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 Sukadzi. 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 Yeah, what? Sukadzi. What? Suk. Sukadzi. Yeah, what? Okay. One A. Sukadzi. Click. Click again. What's the A? The Yagan. A dot. I have to click what to. Yeah, okay, good cheese. Uh, you did put a satu. Cleok yadi. Cleok yadi, yeah, okay. Sakinya. Os. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's tin to a guess a cookie. Yeah, I'll go. You shan. Hey, she's a Oh, wait, ah, okay. Okay, she's lucky. Catlego, lucky. Catlego, okay. Okay, can cheese. Juan Sain. Ah, uh, uh, six shastin. Six shastin. That's a uh, YNLC. You can you a tongue dark hitty. Ah, Oh, okay. Cost of good lee for a burl. Ah, okay. Cost of good okay. Um, Hifti Kayani watercress. Yake, Hifti Kayani, yake. Which again? Oh, yake. You dead for ah. What's her eat for her? Ah, Tuk. Tuk. Oh, yake. Yeah, what? Now, a well. A stach honey. A stach honey. Okay. Okay. Yes. Ah, yeah, a well. Um, took. I said. There were two a ah. Oh, took. Took. Oh, ah, uh, took. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Chukan. Chukan, okay. Lagoon. Lagoon, ah. Ah, who check in? Ah, I call ah. Ah, tagwiki. Ah, tagwiki. How? Ask at the hinaga? Sukagach to ah. Kahunach yak eh. Ah, unsure what eh. Sukke. And she would get Shah 
Sach again. Sach, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah, gwell dew tu a achwa a. We see the rickshaw. Ah. Ah, we cut ya chia ti kwa a. Jaruta see the. Echwa tu a ach. Yisaku again, was that do a sago at yellow cedar, clingit enach. Red. Shay. Yai. 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 Chai. Chai. Yai koa. Yo. Yisaku again. Ya you khatangi. Okay, nyke. Pasa out the gun. Ish. Ish ke. Ah. Dasa we talk enough. Ish. Hmm. I not say it right. What's it in English? Kelp. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wasn't hearing the the G. Yeah, what? G. Yeah, what? I was just hearing ish. I was like, okay, ish. Ish. Okay. Achanis. I can tunk. They were two a ach or a. Take a tunk. Chuken. Chuken. They were two a ach. Chuken. Cheese. Oh, okay. You can't get cheese. They seen you eat for a ha. Eat that. Eat that. Okay. Kiani Clark. Johnny. 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 Ah, it's a good thing. Ah, it's a good thing. Ah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Chukwan. Chukwan. Ah, okay. Wait, that's it. Take a flame. Oh, see, Yannicka? Take a flame. Take a flame. Wait, that's it. Deo tuwa ach. How about kids chips? Yenaka Kip Chip. Oh, you okay? Oh, you okay? Oh, okay. Kusta teku. Kusta teku. Kusta teku. Yeke. Cheese. Water food. 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 On Tlaiko. 
was on Kerto, okay? Setuk. Sin. Sin, okay? Sakinya. See, Anaka. I thought you said do. Oh. Soup. Soup. Oh. 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 Soup. Soup. Oh. 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 Yak okay. ayam. Gonna cheese. Ah, uh, it's it's ten. Cleo, cust uch nog dush tog. Yak ayam. Making stuff up. Clean. Ah. Kuh de tua achtke. Like, no cheese. Ah, ye de kuk ah. Kuh de tua achka. Hooch. Gonna cheese. Young ha ye do a saco at I have no more. Kestasa Achi, what's just hoot? Hoot. All gone. So, how do you say she stole mine? Ach, a dach awa She stole it out of my mouth. She was right before me, so I had I had nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, y N L C. Quan Lin. Uh, it at. It at. Okay. It at. Oh. Cranberry. Okay. Uh, speaky cow. Uh, shake. Yeah. Oh, that's what. Uh, Siki Kau Cheku. Cheku, Siki Kau Cheku. They talk in a watermelon berry. Uh, it's like ghosts. Oh, Cheku. Ah, Cheku. Siki Kau Cheku. Ah. Yeah. Oh, Siki Kau Cheku. Watermelon berry, Siki Kawu Sheku, Puffball Mushroom. Yeah, well. Yuck, eh? Tell the head in. Asta Kuka. Asta Kuku. Asta Kuku. Yeah, well. Pitch. Ah. Gonna cheese. Well, you did to a yak. Sarch. 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 Arch. Huh. Arch. Oh, you okay? Cheese. Boss kick a queen. Oh, you okay? Cheese. Shuck, deo tua ach. Nak. Nak. Wait, okay. Deo tua ach. Oh, you okay? Khaz. Khaz. Oh, khaz. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our. You okay? You okay? Khaz. 
Okay, what's <laughs> Yan Yan, huh? Out of my mouth. Goodness, she's talking to Tani Tootie Tee. A cock tree, dee, ye awa. Yate, a day or two, a cocker. Yain again? Teskayani. Hintak adi. Kach. Kach. Yeah. Yen. I see we cucumber. Yeah, but it's a, it's a creature. Oh, well, that oh, cucumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's a brain. <laughs> yeah, they call and they call it a sea pickle too. But yeah, it's it's like a. I don't know. It's a living creature. It is. Yeah. It's got meat and you eat it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ook, deo tua ach, nettles again. Tsiksh. Chai. Deo tua ach, we chai. Kakli. Kakli, ah. Deo tua ach, tsu. What? Oh, what? Oh, what? Gonna cheese, okay? Gugs, eedy. Ah, do he duck? She did say that. Astaga, Astaga, Godly, Master Godly, get away. See you, shakas ahu. Cannot sock or cut sock godly. So, three different like mushrooms. Oh, sechwani. That's a good one. How? Oh. We got them all. That was, <laughs> that was lots. That was super awesome. So that was good. I think years ago when I would do this, the plants would just, we could hardly do any. That's amazing. Because we have to know about these plants. They're all around us, foods, medicines, all kinds of things. Gunas cheesh, yik a. So, any like uh, reflections, thoughts, questions? I mean, there was a whole bunch of them. Um, just when we do this, we'll try. I'm not going to be too strict about it. But we'll try not to look them up as we're going. We're just trying to do this from memory. So, like, I'll give you a category. And you go study as much of these things as you can, and then we'll just try to name as many as we can. Yeah, okay, that was. Can, oh. can you tell me the name for sweet potato? Somebody said that real early on. Oh, what was that? Sots? Is that it? Like Indian potato, but just oats is potato. Yeah. So I I assumed it was probably the the yellow one. He said take. 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 I think no no that's pitch scab. Sorry. Oh so, taste. Yeah. So the sweet potato. I wrote it down. I can't read my own writing. Thought. No no I'm, I'm thought. So Art, is it it? Yeah. I'll put this, I'll start sharing the screen so you guys can see. Oh, 
Sans. No one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is a fun sample sentence. This potato is too big. For what? No, it doesn't even fit in the pot. I don't know. Okay, any other thoughts, questions? Any just general language thoughts or questions that you guys had that might help you? Okay. Okay. Well, that was lots. That was really good. Um, well, let's finish. I don't know if we finished this card the other day. We'll finish this card, then we'll take a break, and then we'll do a few structural things. Maybe look at another one of these cards. So, um, again, these, these cards are intended to give you these verbs already built for you. Uh, and then you can see how they sort of change for person. Uh, so this was, again, to be a certain way. So we had, uh, just to review, these ones were like, let me be that way, let it be that way, be that way, don't be that way, uh, is that way, isn't that way, was that way, I think we did all of these, uh, wasn't that way, I don't know if maybe we did those, but we'll do the future ones just so we can start to hear what these ones sound like. So if you've been involved with clinky culture, you've probably said or heard ye kwati. So ye kwati is the future form of yati. So all these times, like we wasaiyati, wasaiyati, wasaiyati. We've learned how to say that, and there's a verb in there. So then we saw what happens when it goes negative, uti. And now we'll see what happens when it goes future. Kukwati. Right? So let's start with the third person because there's nothing, there's no uh, other pronoun there. Yekwati. 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 It will be that way. Right? And so. Uh, Sakinya, so this is a, a handout that we worked on last week. So this one's not in any book yet. Uh, but the, these cards, uh, we printed a bunch when we were in Whitehorse over the summer. I'll get some more printed off locally. And then it's on our uh, class webpage if you want to just download it so you've got them with you. If you want to get them printed yourself, uh, you can. Eventually, they'll probably be... When I come back after my hiatus next year, I'll have a third year advanced clinket book and this will be something that's in there. But I thought of them as just cards you can just sort of pack around. But the problem that I typically run into is there's so much stuff to put in there that if I put on too small of a card, you're gonna have to need a magnifying glass to, to look at it. So these ones I think we did like five by eight. Okay. So uh, we'll say it three times and somebody tell me how to interpret it. And this you're going to see as, that should probably be gkwati, because once, you know, the, the thing before it ends with a, a vowel, it can be kkwati. Then if there's like khat, I should probably change this to gkwati. And there's, it's not a right or wrong really thing. It's just what's the easiest thing to say. Kukwati and gkwati are interchangeable. It can work either way. Okay. And so how do we interpret that? Yechat kukwati. I will be that way. So... When somebody says, Egak A, be good. Yehak kwati, I'll be that way. Yehak kwati. Yehak kwati. Yehak kwati. Yehak kwati. Yehak kwati. Yehak kwati. The hak, it's going to go, Yehak 
hawk or teeth. It's going to run right into that. The sounds will run right into themselves. And how do we interpret that one? We will be that way. We will be that way. So then there's a, a song. I'm not getting how are how are we what's going to happen to us how are we going to be so that's a that's pulling the question markers in there and they can go in front of some of these things right uh you will be that way. Y'all, you all use. You Hans, you all will be that way. Uh, we did that one. Ye has kwati. 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 They will be that way. Ye cock quati. Ye cock quati. Ye cock quati. Ye cock quati. People will be that way, right? So then all of these are going to go negative, won't be that way, right? So I won't be that way, we won't be that way, right? And we'll just say these ones kind of fast. Keshye hakka kwati. Keshye hakka kwati. Keshye hakka kwati. Keshye hakka kwati. Keshye ik kwati. Keshye ik kwati. Keshye yik kwati. Keshye yik kwati. Keshye ik kwati. Keshye ik kwati. Keshye haska kwati. So these futures, every one of them for the future is going to want to be long and high. T, T, T. Every verb is going to want to be long and high. The only exception is if that verb root never changes. Like, that one is always khan. It's always short and high. Almost all of them change, though, and the futures will go. That's why you say, su, ye, ik, kwas, teen. It needs to go up right at the end. Because this is one thing I see is like, I think it's because people say like, see you later. And so they'll say, su, ye, ik, kwas, teen. And it comes down where it's just go, su, ye, ik, kwas, teen. Like real, like. Own and of of shingit, the future negatives to not be that way will always want to be long and high. Right? It will be. It won't be. That's so. And this is a consistent rule. And you'll start to learn what the other parts are that put these verb modes together. There's some stuff that pops up right there. You know. Kukwa kukwa kukwa. And then you're going to see what happens when you start putting subjects in there. It's very predictable. There's a lot there, but it's very predictable. So the first thing, when you start learning how to use verbs in these ways, you're going to look at what's the prefix going to do and what's the stem going to do. And then you just learn how to put those together, right? And so uh, that's the purpose of these, the cards, is so that you'll have them for quick reference. Because I tried to think of verbs, like the 20 verbs I think people need to know how to use. And then these, these modes that you might use them in. Uh, and then eventually you get to the point where you can just put these together yourself. And then you can just, you'll just learn more verbs and you'll learn how to put them together. 
or you'll be able to be able to take a really good guess. There's a couple of, of things that you might not know about that verb. Um, yeah, what? Okay. Is it to we or us? Is it to? If we are doing it. Yeah. yeah. If it's us. Yeah. So for, for Clinkit, for things to be certain ways, be strong, be good, be clean, be dirty, be bad, be uh, kind, you're going to have object pronouns, right? So instead of I am nice, it's going to be me nice, right? So, um, so this is just one thing to think of. Is, and this will show us. So this shows O right up here. So that means we're looking at objects, and it's just a, which set of pronouns are we looking at? Oh, it's the one where it happens to the it happens to them, right? And then sort of uh, the other thing we'll look at, and one thing that's really cool about shingit is those things are built into the verb. So it goes object, subject, verb, and they're they're built in there, and there's. A few, there's like 0.1%, I guess, of languages that are built that way. Haida's built that way. Mm -hmm. I remember when I, I was at Kahaka Ula Okealikilani and they're doing a presentation and they're like, most languages go subject, verb, object, and then there's a few that go these other ways, and 0% of them go object, subject, verb. I was like, zero? Can't you give us like a something? <laughs> it's like, we are the 0%. <laughs> Uh, these these are posted. Uh, let me show you guys where I at the end of class. Uh, I'll usually uh, post on our class webpage. This is clinkitlanguage.com under learning clinkit and then intermediate clinkit. And then if you go down, uh, typically you'll see like the date. And then you can watch the class if you missed it, you want to watch it again, you want to tell somebody about it, say, hey, go check this stuff out that we learned. Any, anybody with internet access can view these. Underneath it says what kinds of things we did or talked about. Then there are handouts. So here's these, it's called Clinkit study card verbs. That's where these are. So put them on your devices, uh, print them, do, you know, if you want to go get them done on index cards or whatever. And a YNLC did a bunch of them for us, which was uh, amazing uh, because it was one of these things where we're getting ready to have a language camp. And I was like, you know, it'd be great if we did this. And so I did it a couple of days before we started and said, could you print like a million of these things? And they did. It was amazing. Uh, but we're going to try and get these done as like maybe a packet so that they'll be just available. People can just get them. Sheesh. And then... Uh, but usually, so this is where handouts would be. Yeah, what? <laughs> and if you are registered for this class to get a grade, or if you want to just, everybody should do the midterm because that's, you got to do the work. So this is a handout that we uh, looked at on Tuesday. This is a story called Alcat Scene. And uh, the clinket is written down, and your work is to translate the, into English. So we'll take a look at that over, you know, probably not next week, but maybe the week after we'll start looking at it. Definitely do as much work as you can. Don't feel like if you can't get it that you're going to, like, not do well or anything, because we'll, we'll all look at it together. But this is just a sort of some of the next steps are as you start writing down what people are saying, you start translating that, you start putting together your own things so that you're, you're speaking in these more complex sort of sentences about different subjects and not just sort of saying the same things that we've memorized. That's the point that we're at in our language learning. Uh, so let's take, uh, take five. We'll come back. We'll look at something else. We might do another one of these cards, and then we'll see if you guys have any Questions. Pigeon when it's Hanach Gartu saw. Question how we name. Has anybody got any questions or things that they were thinking about? Jump into the next thing.
there. <laughs> a lot of plans. Yeah, yeah honey. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. Because there's lots of things to go uh, look up. So let's talk about some some different aspects of the clinket verb so we can just really we're going to look at several different pictures several different examples of what these different components are and what they do uh, when we were learning clinket i think uh, 20 years ago we just did a lot of memorization just we tried to memorize everything and i think what the and I think it's fine to start with these big chunks of language and to try and look at whole language and how language is used. But as far as to be able to start moving it around, what we realized, what I realized, is I get a little bummed out because I would look something up. All we had was the yellow dictionary and the orange dictionary. That's all we had at that time. And so I'd look stuff up in the yellow dictionary, and then I would just try to use that verb in other way, just to plug it into some other sentence. And then I realized that that was could only be used in that one way, whether it was a time thing or who was doing it or who it was happening to. All of that information is built in mostly in the front part of the verb, what we call the prefix. So then uh, they had some different charts and stuff to show us the, the classifier and these other things that they were trying to just sort of teach us how it worked, primarily uh, Richard Downhauer would show us the charts and talk about the classifier and then Nora would be there to just talk to us and and to tell us how to say things and to to help us with a lot of our pronunciation so it was a really neat thing these two different sides of the language a analytical side and more of a sort of natural language side so nowadays we try to do kind of both and so we follow uh, in some of the footsteps of, of Mohawk folks who they used to try and teach their language in these big chunks but what they realize is those big things are made up of a bunch of little things so if you showed people what those little things are and just say oh you're depending on the situation you'll grab one of these things and start putting them together and that's how it works and that's how a lot of native North American languages work it's a bunch of little things that add up to big things so one of the ways we start thinking about this is this tree. So the tree is just sort of thinking about the verb in terms of there might be some words that pop up before the verb. Then there's the verb itself, which is made up of a prefix and a stem, and maybe a suffix, but that's kind of rare. And then there might be stuff that comes after it, but that's also kind of rare. And so post-verb and pre-verb means words before or after the verb itself. Within the verb you have some things that are built in there. So in the prefix this is going to tell you who's doing it, which is what we call a subject, who it's happening to, which is what we call an object, uh, any thematic stuff. So a thematic prefix means something. For example, we were uh, Paul Marx uh, and I were talking on Facebook about how to say texting. And so this will show you a really good about how a thematic prefix works. So talking is called you khatangi. Shinkit you khatangi. You khatan. You khatan. So that khatan is there. The kh part means mouth. So you khatangi would be language, words. You khatan is a command form. Speak. You khatan. She or he said it, talked, right? So that kh can change from mouth to tu, which is inside. And you could say, uh, you to tungi would be thoughts. You to tun, think about it, right? Think of it. Uh, uh, you, uh, you to tan, right? So the t can change, and so then you could put a goosh on there, which is a thumb, or a killer whale dorsal fin, 
So we're calling it yukushtungi, is texting. And so this is how a thematic prefix works. It's something that goes in a very specific spot that has meaning. And so you, we'll see how this sort of works. We'll learn there's lots of them, but there's some that are very common and that we should know. So that's what we call a thematic prefix. Then there's conjugation prefixes, which are going to just put the verb into this different, you know, we're talking about time, might happen, happened, will happen, happening, not happening. All of those are going to rely on these conjugation prefixes to kick in. And they're going to have, some of them have a specific sort of job. Some of them is like, oh yeah, this thing, this thing, this thing. Now you've got the future. Those three things have to be on every time. So this one is drawn like a, a tree. So this one is like, is it real or not? You can mark right in the verb that it definitely did not happen. Then you can also mark that we're going to just say this is a, a past tense type of a thing or a future type of a thing. And then uh, there's going to be these other ones that just pop up for certain situations. And, and we'll see what they do. There's quite a few things in there, but really there's just these kind of three or four possibilities. And you can just put different things in there for different things. So from there, uh, you can have some things before the verb. Those are going to maybe deal with motion. So is it flying up? Is it flying down? Is it flying there? Did it come to a stop? Those types of things are motion. Is it affecting meaning? Like are we adjusting the meaning? Uh, or are we modifying it somehow? Like the negative thing, klesh, goes in the preverb. Kedain, to do it well. Uh, there's, there's just things that can pop up there to just alter the verb a little bit or change the meaning. Because sometimes you can have a verb like if you say uh, a kawanik, that means she or he told it. Some kind of information, some kind of news. But if I put the word k in front of it, k a kawanik, she or he tattled on somebody. They told, they narked, however you want to say it, right? That's the reason my little brother, and he got in big trouble. His friend called me and he said, I know who narked on him. I was like, I don't care. Like, he's in trouble. So, but, <laughs> and so sometimes you put something in there and the verb doesn't have to change. But once you put that thing in there, now it means something different. Right? And say, like, uh, is to talk. That's to scold. Right? So sometimes you're going to just drop a word in front and now it's going to change the meaning. That's what we mean by the preverb. Is it, it just changes it into something a little bit different. Also, uh, hus, so to pluralize the third person, that's going to pop up in front of the verb. So then we go sort of a little bit deeper into the verb towards the bottom of our tree, and we've got a classifier. Every verb has a classifier. It belongs to one of these four groups, and that's associated with either meaning, function, or classification. And we'll just keep looking at what this type of thing does. This is the heart of Slingit logic, is this classifier root system. Uh, and so one of the reasons the classifier might change is say, oh yeah, it's not just a thing, it's a specific thing. You're not just dragging it, you're dragging it by a handle. You're not just carrying it, you're carrying a complicated object or a stick. So those are going to deal with the classifier. It's not seeing something, it's watching something, right? Because the other thing is like, it's not just happening, somebody's making it happen. And that's another thing. Like you say, or maybe you say, I feel good. You made me feel better. So then it changes from a zero to an L because somebody makes it happen. So the classifier, Oops, could have cheesh. Uh, there's a, <laughs> okay, yeah. There's a spelling error in there. 
One of my roots, I don't know how to spell. I'm blaming the tree. Uh, and then the classifier, it has two things that can, it's like a light bulb that could turn on, right? And one of them we call plus i. It means it goes to the i form of the classifier. So the reason it would go plus i is to say the verb has happened. So when you say yak a, the ya that you're hearing is plus i, because it, it has it, it has to be good to be good. So that's why it goes ya. Shitzin, there's the i in there. Right? Ich se chan, the i is in there. Because it, it's, it is that way. It can also go plus D, and that's a little more complicated. Because plus I, it just means it happened. If the verb happened, turn the I switch on. Plus D usually means whoever's doing it is also having it happen to them. Seeing myself, talking to myself, conversing, because I'm talking and listening. At least I should be. Uh, and so that's what we call plus D. And plus D usually means like, the subject is also the object. And English doesn't care about that. It doesn't mark that. But clink it does. And then you have a verb root. And that verb root has meaning. Eh. Uh, eh is a tree trunk. Right? And so right there at that core is meaning. And so we'll look at a few of these. And if, if that root has something and then you start changing it, then you'll see... Uh, how that works. And then you have some suffixes, and uh, suffixes usually deal with repetition. It's probably the most common one. And uh, repetition can also be habitual. Uh, means So it's like, does it regularly, does it all the time. Those are the two ways. Or uh, I guess there's three. Does it regularly, does it every single time. Right. So you say, he eats uh, frosted flakes. He eats Frosted Flakes every single day. That's the habitual one. The third type of repetition is something that happens a bunch of times at once, like punching or, or something like that. Uh, a relational suffix. So you say, yak e, ich satine. So that I is the same thing as the relational suffix you see in ach hidi. Right? And we'll, we'll look at some examples. It'll start to make sense. Decessive means it's not like that anymore. So you could say, Chosakuwun. I used to know. <laughs> right? Uh, and then there's, there's a couple other complicated, less common ones to remove something. <laughs> that ak one means to, to take it out. So you remove the guts of a fish in particular. To miss something, like to shoot a basketball and missed. Kuchita. <laughs> He shot and missed the basketball. And then uh, that it becomes that way easily. And, and that one's pretty rare. Some of these are pretty rare. Uh, uh, and then you have some things that might come after, right? And, and we'll look at those later. Because I think that some of, the, some of this stuff is, is pretty complicated stuff. And we'll get there. But for now, we'll sort of look at this uh, in, in a slightly different way. So the other thing is if we just made each of these things into little boxes. What you have in a clinket verb is you can have up to quite a few things. You must have a stem and a classifier. The rest of the stuff can be added. But then some of these things, like each of these little, like uh, these two have to be there. But the other ones, subjects, objects, other stuff, if it's there, you cannot remove it. And you cannot add something to it without making a new verb. So that's the thing, is once it's, you have to remember that it's there, if, it, if you see it there. And we try to write this stuff out, and that's why it looks like an algebra equation these days, is we're trying to show you these are all the things that are there. And we're trying to just say, if you look at this, it'll, it'll give you that skeleton so that you can start to move it around. So like we talked about, preverb, and this is the order. It must go in this order. Object, thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier, stem, suffix. 
It has to go in that order. You cannot, you can't move those things around. They're built into the verb. So we'll start uh, on the outsides and look at some examples. So here's a couple. Here's four different verbs that are using a preverb, uh, and we'll just say them so we'll make sure that we're talking and not just uh, mm -hmm. being talked to the whole time. Adekakwagut. 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 So that says, uh, I am going to go there. But how would you say, I'm going to go home? Nestekakwagut. How would you say, I'm not going to go home? Anyone? Yeah, away. So then what's going to happen is you're going to put clash in front of it. And let's just keep it ade for this example. We would drop clash in front of it. Ade kwa good. It's going to drop to a low stem. Kwa good. good. Just think of it as like, I'm missing the party or bingo or basketball, whatever it is. Right? Not that it's always sad, but it's just something to help you remember. The long and high, it's going to happen. The long and low, it's not going to happen. Right? So that's, but what we're looking at here is ade. That's the preverb part, because that could change too. I'm going to go away from it. I'm out of here. Right. Here's another example. Everybody, we'll say it a few times. Hasako shahit. Hasako shahit. Hasako shahit. Hasako shahit. Hasako shahit. They wrote it. So the has right here is pluralizing the third person. And we'll see why the has has to be there. And, and there's when you deal with clinket pronouns, there's just some things that it just presents. And English has a bunch of things like this, where it's just kind of awkward to say certain things. This is another, it's not really awkward, it's just, this is just the way that the language is built. But so here, a cow shahit is she or he wrote it. Has a cow shahit, they wrote it, right? So that pops up before. This one has two different words. Uh, we'll say it and then I'll show you what's going on here. Stuchastu. 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 So I am studying. So there's two things in the preverb here. And what they are is this sh means to the self, to one's own. Tu, so sh tu on its own means inside myself. More than likely to the brain, right? The tu usually means brain, right? It's usually thinking about thoughts, feelings, intentions, spirit, just like that tu, wu. But that, so you, this, this is the same type of thing, this sh, as we saw with ach, i, du, ha, ye, hastu. Here's a new one. Chush or the sh could go either way, right? And so, uh, if you want to say, look at yourself, that sh is going to be there, because it can be there right here. It's being here. It's in here as one of these possessive things, like my, your, but it could be there as an object as well. Shchotzetin, I saw myself in the mirror or whatever, right? The tu is inside. Because you could say chashtu, but chashtu, if you just didn't have, if you just said chashtu, people would be like, you're, you're teaching? Because chashtu on its own means I am teaching. It's usually going to be to someone. I'm teaching people right now. 
shtuchatu. I'm, I'm teaching it to put it inside myself. I'm studying. Right. Here's a negative one. Kachwasaku. 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 So there's a few things that we'll learn. So once we, the, the verb goes negative, you shouldn't have se, you should have sa. And you shouldn't have ku, because you say khwaseku, I know. Khwaseku, it should be short. And, and we'll see, we'll learn about why and how to predict it and how to know what it's going to be. But this one right here, that klesh, and once that klesh pops up, that verb is going to go into its negative form. Any questions? Everybody all right? Okay. There's some things that could pop up in the post verb, but the most common one is going to be nooch. And nooch can be nooch, nooch, niche, or niche. It just depends on where you're from. Those of you who are uh, inlanders, you're probably going to be saying niche. And you're probably going to hear your speakers say niche. And so this one has to do with uh, repetition. And so some of the language students that would have, they would use it in English kind of in a teasing way just for fun. Because someone's like, hey, I forgot my wallet. Uh, could you pick up lunch? And they'll say, nooch, right? Like it's always, it's always happening. It's not quite grammatically correct, but it's still fun. So this should come immediately after the verb. So we'll do this one in two parts. Yes, kukahainen. Yes, kukahainen. Yes, kukahainen. Yes, kukahainen. Yes, kukahainen. Yes, kukahainen. So if we taught everybody to speak Klinkit, we can, why'd you move out of Juno? <laughs> and then here's another one. So this, uh, this one, so this has two verbs kind of tied together. And then this one uh, has something in the preverb. So this thing in the preverb, uh, we'll just say it on its own. Chakak. 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 All the time. This is going to push the verb into a repetitive, there should be some repetitive form. I'm always late. I'm always, she's always answering the question. He's al he always makes the coffee. What, whatever it is, if it's one of these always or all the time types of things. Um, and then the verb itself, askuk nooch. Askuk nooch. Askuk nooch. Askuk nooch. Here he coughs all the time. So we'll move uh, from here to look at objects and subjects. So the object is who it's happening to. Me, you, him or her, them, whom, those types of things. The subject is the one who does it, right? So for example, Chat Isachan. Chat Isachan. Chat is a chan. Chat is a chan. You love me. So we're going to see me right there, and then this is you, and then sechan is the verb to love. Chat ye shuk. 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 Y'all laughed at me. Where? And then we've we've said this one. Ye ik kwasatin. 
A is right there. There's a bunch of other stuff, but kwa. Kwa. is I am going to. So you're going to see that in a bunch of different future verbs, right? But just like kwa good, we saw that earlier. Kwasa, kwasa, kwasa teen. I'm going to watch it, right? Ade kwa good. I'm going to go there. Ade kwa kuch. I'm going to get in my car and get out of here, right? Hawu ich. Hawu ich. Hawu ich. Hawu ich. Hawu ich. Hawu ich. So there's the ha. So she or he invited us. And this could change also, the subject can change as well. How do we eat? We were invited. Right? So if we're having some debate about whether we should be going over to the village or not, how do we eat? We were invited. That's why I want to go over there. So then the subjects, we're looking at the, the subject will always be right next to the classifier. The objects the, out pretty far, there'll be stuff in between it, but then the subject is right there by the classifier. So we had you love me, so now I love you. The old purple dinosaur, you sing this all day. <laughs> So there's the i, that one's you, as chat was me, right? Cha is I am doing it, right? I laughed at you all, right? So then we see shuk, shuk, khan, khan, but the prefix is the thing that's changing. That's where it's communicating the information. We're, what we learn how to do is see where these lists are, memorize the things in there by doing these different drills, and then next thing you know, we'll be able to put that stuff together. So we'll be able to say, oh yeah, what's the verb for uh, calling someone over? Oh yeah, okay. I called you over here. She or he called me over there. Right? So now, uh, same thing, this verb, so we're looking at the subject. And then we invited them. So here's them as the hus, that's those guys. Haswatuwa ig. Haswatuwa ig. Haswatuwa ig. Haswatuwa ig. Haswatuwa ig. We invited them, right? So it's just, it's learning how these things change, right? <coughs> Questions? Everybody all right? So for us, it's the T-U. But if it's inside of you, is it T-O-O? -O? Yeah, and that inside of you is separate from the verb, mm -hmm. right? And so, but you could say, shtu tush, and you're getting those two in a row. Shtu tush, tu. We are studying. So you're going to, you could have, there's a tutu in there. I wasn't sure how you spelled it for us. Yeah. There it is right there. Yeah, so that one stays short because it's, the things that get in the verb tend to be shorter than the things that are outside. Okay. Okay, any other questions? I had a question. Mm. If you can hear me okay. Yeah, I hear you. Um, okay. um, I was wondering about, you have ha wu ik, and then the has wu tu wa ik, and the, on the we invited them, has wu tu wa ik, I see the wu tu wa, and you have the wu before the um, we pronoun. 
the per, uh, first person plural pr pronoun. Um, but then I'm wondering what that wu is. Would that be a classifier or what would that be? Because I was confused since it's coming. Yeah, yeah. So the classifier has to be right next to the stem. They can't, nothing can separate those two. So they're always there. So yaih is what this verb is. Yaih, setim, right? So that's the classifier stem combo is always like that. Right next to that is going to be the subject, t. So that's this one here. This hus is out here in the preverb, and you could change it to, uh, it could be an object as well. And there, there's an object there, but it's a zero. So what this w thing is, and it gets contracted right here to wu, that's what we call the perfective marker. The perfective marker you could think of as being similar to an English past tense thing. So once you see that w on there, we're kind of saying it has already happened. The, the trick with Tlingit, though, is it could be something that's happening right now. Because you say, Hwasiku, that w is the perfective marker, even though it's right now. But for Tlingit, it has to have happened. Some of these things have to have happened to be that way. And so hmm. one thing that you could do with this is you have Hwasiku, but if this changes to ye, there's, there's got to be one other change here. Does anybody know what this other change is going to be? Because we wouldn't really say ye wu tu wu yi. For those of you who are in Tessin, there's a particularly important change that would happen at this point. So some of the things that we pay attention to is do things end with a consonant or a vowel? Because if they end with a vowel, they're going to kind of run into the next thing. So what's going to happen is this is going to contract to that. You to we invited you all. And for those of you who are in Teslin, this is when you're going to get this switch right there. Im to it's a, it's a highly predictable switch when we start talking about dialects and stuff and, and these other things. There's just certain things that are going to happen. One, if a vowel runs into this w on its own, it's going to collapse the, it's going to collapse the next vowel in it. Because Clinkit has this sort of thing. Like for, if you go from the stem and you start going left, once you get to three things, there's, there's going to be contraction there somewhere. It's going to start contracting with its, and this is where Clinkit gets kind of complicated, uh, but super fun is because it starts doing this stuff, and you got to just just figure out how these things add up to one another. But that's what it is. It's what we call the perfective marker, uh, which is very similar to a past tense marker in English. Gaga. Oh. Okay, any other questions? So let's look at the next thing. So here's the, uh, the thematic. And the thematic is, is pretty straightforward. If you, they could put something in there and it means something. You could put a thumb in there. You could put a finger in there. You could put a mouth in there. You could put a nose in there. And so these are things that you can add, but once you put something in there, it's a different verb. It's not like you can just throw those in there for anything. And then there's certain ones, in, and as far as I can tell, you can't just grab any one you want. So you'll learn that this is how verbs are made in Tlingit. There's thousands and thousands of them. There's all these roots, and then the roots can have different classifiers, and then those root classifier combinations can have different thematic prefixes. So the first one, we'll just sort of look at these, uh, this list of them. And these are the most common ones. There's more than this. You can have up to three of them on a single verb. So you can say, shh, 
Ekshautlinash. And that means he or she shook their wave their finger like that. That's a very complicated um, verb. But so if we look at these, these all mean something. So this one it just it relates to a space. It's a it's it's a really interesting one. When it pops up onto a verb, it, this could be the one that pushes it out to talk about the weather. That's this one. Also, yati is to be. Siti is to be a member of a group. Kudziti is to exist. So that it, it, it just has special meaning. And it also has, this is built into these smaller words, or uh, these other words that we've used, kunach, kudach. It's in those. So when we say kutch ayanaha for a star, it's like they're, they're moving and there's just too many to count, is what it's kind of referring to. But this k pops up in a lot of different places, and it's, it's hard to kind of define because, but you could say, yakudzigay, and it means to be intelligent. So it's just something, just keep an eye out as you see it, see how it changes the verbs itself. You have another one out here, ka. 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 And this is comparing things. And there's these two other ka's. Because we're clinket. We like to make things. <laughs> there was some, some people a long time ago like, how can we make this harder? <laughs> but the comparative one, like, so you can have ka and ka, right? So the, the one you'll see most often is this one that has to do with the horizontal surface. A kao shikhit wrote on it. That ka is on there, right? Uh, and there's there's a whole bunch of them that have ka built into it. But ta is a mosquito. ta is to bite. ka ka because it has two things biting together, are pliers. When you say yage, it's big or it's many. But if you say ye ku you're saying it's this big, or there's that many. So because you're comparing it to something, that ka pops up there. Yiksigank, small. That ka is on there. And so this is just another thing. You'll have to just look at more and more examples. And then these ones, the ones in the second one, are pretty straightforward. So you can see the meaning right here. Uh, so this is where you might get thinking and talking or doing something and working. His hands and Tlingit are very much associated with doing work. Okay. So je. And then ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 pops up in a few different places. Audagon. That's why the the a is on there. Ashlech, ashlun, ashit. So sometimes with the a is sometimes the a is just built in there, and it's just there. Audagon. It's just there. Other times it's there to say just focus on the action. So it's it's a little complicated, but you can say awachun, she or he hunted. But the a would fall off if you say what they were hunting. Zisk wu shun. It's just it's another sort of thing to keep an eye out. It's involved with most of the body functions. Outlet uh, saw. She or he burped. Awakwash. 
she or he farted a noisy fart. Awa uh, pooped. Awa peed. Awa coughed. So you're going to see it built in there. And you'll just, it's another one of those things to just keep an eye out. It's, a, it's involved with a lot of the fishing. Asteh. Asqeewu. Adiga. Right? It's going to be built into a lot of those. So then the other ones you can have ka, like a spherical object, or ka, a horizontal, a horizontal object. The same. They look the same, but they can only have one of them. And so you just sort of learn with the verb. Because usually if it's a round one, it's going to be like throwing a ball, or picking up a ball, or picking up a round object. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing is you, these, they're in these three categories. And each of these things is like a um, slot machine wheel. There can only be one thing on there. So you can't have any of these two. You have to pick only one. But you can have up to three things. And then uh, the last one is ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. 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 Which is a face or a vertical surface. So here are some uh, here are some differences. So if you say I made furrows like in the garden, right? I, I furrowed it, and then that same verb root, but once you put ka on it, now it's a totally different thing. I wrote it. Is it because it's on a vertical surface? Mm -hmm. I mean, a horizontal surface. A horizontal surface. So the logic be behind writing for Shingit is I made furrows on the paper. It's very cool. It's a very metaphoric thing. <laughs> uh, talk about it. Adat yukhatan. Adat yukhatan. Adat yu khatan. Adat yu khatan. Adat yu khatan. A lot of times when we put in an exclamation point, it means it's a command. And you'll start to recognize these without that punctuation. But it's a guide. And then to command someone to think about it, Adat yu tutan. 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 So that's what we got, is a, a bunch of examples. Uh, when we come back on Tuesday, we'll look at the conjugation and the classifier, which is kind of building up to more and more complicated. But that's it. I mean, oh. even though there's a lot of stuff there, there's only so much. And it's just sort of when we start looking at examples, what you'll find is you're going to be able to predict this stuff. In the meantime, you'll be able to understand more because you'll hear something and your brain is going to pull it out and sort of pull it apart and know how to go look for those certain things. And then we'll just keep sort of going through with some other stuff, making our own lists, doing this and that. Um, so when we come back Tuesday, try and get five more sentences that you're going to share with us that have a little bit of a narrative flow, right? If you want to do a couple more than five, that's totally fine. And then uh, we'll share those, then we'll go back to this, and, and we'll do this stuff next week, but the week after that we'll probably just take a break from some of this stuff and read a story and have fun with that story. Uh, Kadena dot yeji in a ye, hug you katungi. Ye awa a dash to tush to woo ya. Ye awa a to walk a good thing get. Hainach you a yisa at. Huck ye gi a ya yejin a ne, a ka ye quati. Yak eha dance for your ancestors. So you would say, um, here, we'll, we'll put this one on the, on the So the first part is the command form of dance. So 
I'm assuming you're telling more than one person. So anaych eich is the command form dance. And then you'd say, uh, Dance for our ancestors, our grandparents. You could also say Hashagun. Uh, I usually hear the elders talk about it. It really.